Hey there, Cynthia here. Welcome to my quilt lab. And if you've been tuning along with my illusion sampler, I'm just jumping in to do a quick video of what I'm doing when I put it together. The instructions are great, but I thought maybe just a little something, a little something, something for you to help you out. So you can see I have the blocks on the wall, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, or off to the side because my design table is not as tall as I need it to be, but that's okay. You can use your imagination. You'll notice that each one is turned 90 degrees. And you'll also notice that the background switches from, from odds to evens. So make sure you're looking at that picture so that you're getting everything kind of in the right order. And if you don't have a beautiful design wall like this, feel free to just do one row at a time and, and label them with like a safety pin and some post-it notes or something so that everything stays in order and you get this quilt put together just like that picture shows. All right, so what we're going to do is we're first going to put all the pieces into rows. So we'll do these seams here in the middle for each row and we'll be pressing them in opposite directions. So first row and the third row will go in one direction. Second row and the fourth row will go in the other direction. And that's because we want these little corner pieces to nest when we put the rows together in the big quilt top. And he's been doing that with all of our instructions all year long. So I know you're used to it. It's going to be a really easy process to do. There is one thing to think about though, once we start putting the rows together into a big quilt, you can absolutely put all 12 blocks into one big quilt the way the picture shows on the diagram. Or you can just do two rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a second quilt with uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and make two twin size quilts. Now for my batik version, I'm gonna do just like the picture so that we can see that. But if you've been following along in my scrappy version of this pattern, I'm actually gonna turn that quilt into two quilt tops. So I'll be showing some supplemental videos of what I'm doing differently for the two twins. The biggest difference is there's a little bit of extra uh, fabric you're going to need for those borders. But first things first, let's piece this guy together into rows first, then attach the rows. Make sure you're paying attention to how you're pressing those things. And I'll see you in just a bit with a finished quilt top. Let's get stitching. And I'm back with the finished quilt. You saw the panning that I did of the entire thing and Maxie's here to help me out. So let's just talk about this really quickly. If you haven't been pressing as you go, please press as you go because you wanna make sure this is nice and flat because the next step is borders. There are two borders. The first border is a skinny, is that skinny black fabric? And the outside border is one of four fabrics. You'll see in the picture it was teal. I'm going to be using the purple for my border, but there was also a couple other suggestions of a blue and the red was also a couple of options. So let's talk about uh, the borders really quick. You'll see that there's instructions to cut the skinny border, that two and a half one. Uh, by width, so that's the 42 inches, but that big border, the outside one is a six and a half, and it wants you to cut it the lengthwise. So I'm gonna do just a little quick video to give you a couple tips of the lengthwise. You got three yards of fabric, so that means you're doing a three yard strip several times. It's not, it's not very difficult, it just takes a little bit more planning. If you're not comfortable with doing the length cutting, there is enough fabric for you to do the, the width cutting instead. You're just gonna have a lot more piecing to do along the outside border. And the reason they're doing the length is as opposed to the width cutting, just a little aside, is that there's a little bit of stretch in the width, but there's not as much in the length. So they like to put the length on the outside to keep it from stretching. Is it a huge deal? No, I don't think so. And many of my borders I cut just regular like the width of the fabric as opposed to length. But these are the instructions. 
and I want to follow the instructions and help you out if you want to do the same as well. So, so borders. When you start to do the borders, you want to make sure that your quilt top is as square as possible. And you'll see instructions online that want you to have to measure the center, both lengthwise and widthwise, and cut your borders according to that. And I like to measure everything. So I have a little sheet of pep paper and I measure each side, all four sides and the middle, both lengthwise and horizontally and compare because that's how I know if my quilt is square. Now, why is it important that the quilt is square? Well, if it's not square, you open up the possibility of having a wavy border or some fullness in it. So measuring all of these things and taking a look you're going to have the opportunity to square the top up before you add the borders. And the as square as the quilt it can be, the better your borders will go on. So just a little tip. If it's off by just a smidgen, you're going to be fine. Don't worry about that. But if there's like a big inch worth difference, you might want to think about squaring it a little bit before you put those borders on. All right. So the next step is putting borders on. So I'm going to Take this down off the wall. I'm going to do my outside, my first set of borders, and I'm going to have to piece them a little bit. So I'm going to use a miter uh, stitch to piece the borders. And then we put that big border in. But before I get to that, let me show you a couple of tips about making the borders. All right. So let's discuss these borders. I'm going to start with that small one. That's that two and a half inch width, just like a, a binding. And we're going to be joining them so that we have enough for the length and the width and all that fun stuff. And we're going to be doing a miter um, across. It doesn't say to do a miter across. So if you wanted to, I mean, it's your quilt. If you wanted to do, to do a straight seam, you know, I'm not going to say that's wrong. I like to do a miter because it's less bulkiness because that, that diagonal, when we qu go to quilt this, it's a, it'll be a little less easier. It'll be easier to do that. And um, <clears throat> it's also nice on something that has a print. So, you know, our bigger border has is print. It's easier on the eye of, of that diagonal. You don't see the transition quite as much. So let's talk about mitering. Um, with batiks, please remember that you can often use both sides of a, of a batik. So anytime I'm using a batik or a solid, I'd like to make sure I've marked it of which side is the top and which side is the bottom. So you can see my pin, my button pins here. This is the top of the fabric because there's nothing more frustrating to putting a, a binding or a border together and having the fabric go top, back, top, back, top, back. So I, I've just marked that. That's just my little tip. To do the miter, I have the one strip there and I'm putting the other one face down, just like a binding. And I like to use my mat. I like to use a line so that I know I'm, you know, going to be straight. I'm going past each side because remember that's the selvage and you don't want to sew on the selvage because it's a different kind of weave. And then I'm going to grab a ruler go across the diagonal and this should show up really nicely on the camera my yellow chalk Mira did not like that sound <laughs> yes little girl it's fine so there's that diagonal I'm gonna throw a couple of pins in and I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on that. Now let's just pretend that I've done the stitching and I'll throw these pins in right on top of that. We'll pretend that that's the, my fake stitching. After I fake stitch, I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch off and get rid of all these things. But when I open it up, there's that pretty miter border. All right, so you'll want to do that with the small border. Let's chat about cutting the big border. All right, so let's talk about cutting length of fabric. Now, you're going to have three yards that you're going to be cutting, and obviously this is not three yards. This is just a fat quarter. So I'm just using this as an, as an example so that I can get everything on camera so that you can see what I do. So we're going to play make-believe and pretend this is the width and the length that we're using. So this is the width of the 42. There's the 
the back side, so it is folded, and we're going to pretend this is the three yards. So normally when you go and you buy some fabric, they're cutting it, you know, this way. You buy, you get nine inches by 42. So the length is that nine inches and the width is that 42. Or in this case, the length is the three yards and the width is the 42. So this is what I do. We're obviously going to need to fold this to cut it because otherwise you're just going to be cutting three yards of, and I just want to show you a, an easier way. So I'm going to open it up so I only have one, one piece of fabric there. So there's no fold yet. And then I'm going to fold it the lengthwise in half. I'm going to make sure that selvage is nice and lined up along the edge. And now, so there's the 42, and now this is the yard and a half. Now that's still a long piece of fabric to cut once, so we're going to fold it again. I'm going to give this a little finger press so it stays nice and flat, and I'm going to fold it again. And if you want, you can absolutely take this to the iron and fold those creases, but you don't have to. So now it's folded twice, so it's Three yards became a yard and a half, and a half a yard and a half is, what, three quarters of a yard? So that's a much more manageable length for us to cut. So I want to show you what I do. I've made sure that that selvage is nice and straight, because that's important. I made sure that the fold is nice and crisp, because that's important. And I'm going to line one of the big fold up here along one of the, the edges of my ruler, of my mat. Like I say, I, I like to use all my tools available and I can see every single layer and that's just me if you if you don't want to I just like to see everything so there's the fold and there's the two ends of fabric so we're gonna make sure that these that these folds are parallel because if they're not parallel if they're one of them's off or both of them are off when you go to cut a straight line it's gonna have elbows in it and have point, or it's going to be curved a little bit and you want your border to be nice and straight so we're going to make sure that this is indeed parallel so i'm putting you can see i'm putting that nine right on top of that fold and i'm going to look over here and see that it's just a smidgen off so <clears throat> i'm going to straighten it out a little look i'm a little off right here so let's straighten it out a little bit and we'll check again. And I'm hitting the three eighths now. Three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. So I know that that's straight. So now when I go to cut this at the six and a half width, it's going to be a nice straight border. So let's do the opposite. Let's do what it would look like if you didn't fold things correctly. If you didn't line your selvages up and I'm, I'm going to exaggerate it <clears throat> if you didn't line your selvages up and now if you folded it just slightly off again i know i'm being very exaggerating but i want to i want to show you what this looks like so none of none of my selvages are matching right And when I go to check my folds to see if they're parallel, they're obviously not. So let me show you what happens when you cut this. And I'll just do it here at the end. You see how that's not straight now? It's got this elbow. Let's say that this is your border piece. See how that's not straight? That's why it's really important that when you go to fold everything, you're folding it and that those folds are indeed parallel. So let's see if I can straighten this up.
I'm on the two here, and I'm on the quarter over here. <clears throat> That looks good. Let's just do a swipe. <clears throat> and that's a nice straight edge. So that's important. Now, if this is overwhelming to you and you don't want to cut the, the length, you want to cut the width, you will have enough fabric to be able to do that. You're just going to have to piece the border more than you would the way in the way the instructions read. So there's my little tip about cutting. Go do your borders and I'll see you in just a bit. To the sewing machine. And there it is, our finished quilt top. Look at this beauty. Oh, so pretty. So pleased with how it turned out. I hope you like yours as well. And let me just show you this scrappy one real quick. Isn't that cool? I'll put some stills up too so you can see a closer look of my scrappy version. Hey, I'm so glad you enjoyed you joined me on this wonderful adventure with the Illusion Sampler. And I just want to give out some thank yous. Big thank you to Adirondack Quilts for hosting it with me. Uh, big thank you to Karen Gibbs at Banyan Batiks who dropped by a couple of times at the shop and said hello. Awesome product awesome adventure so thank you to her and thank you to scott a flanagan for this beautiful pattern go and check out all of those people and places in the description below check me out next year as i work on the next block of the month for banyan batiks and hey i hope to see you again in my quilt lab keep quilting see you later